actually not foul. Right. He had six fouls anyway. Yeah, but it's two two points. And it was a clear foul. That was a great call. <laughs> I, know, that's like, I think that's the first time I've heard you say that. Yeah, well, it's the new me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been meditating. I'm serious. I started meditation. Phil thought it was a good idea for me, and I've been doing it. You have Phil really? Jackson now? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, he has 11 titles. It's not a bad guy to listen to. <laughs> Is that the closest to uh, coaching a regular season game you've seen so far? So well, you know, the last Utah game was, too. So, you know, both end of the game situations, and they're, they're, that's always nice to have. Um, you know, I, I was happy second half defensively. Um, I think we held them to, well, 42 if you take JJ's two technicals away. Uh, and that was that, against a good offensive team. That was good. You know, I thought uh, there was a stretch where we could have really stressed the lead. I think we went up and down the court. It felt like 10 minutes, but it was four minutes, and we never, you know, took advantage of some of the matchups that I thought we had. But overall, um, good effort. Happy with CDR's defense down the stretch. That's why we left him in. I thought he was really good because Gerald Green was toasting us, and uh, I thought CDR kind of ran him off his shots, and uh, that was good. That you guys have what one game left? Amen. Time. What do you know about the team? What is it about? Well, I don't know. If I didn't know what I, you know, I know that we have a chance to be really good. I think we have to commit to that. Um, I, like I said, I thought I think we've played this whole preseason stretches and spurts, but we haven't sustained an entire game yet. Um, I know it's in us. You know, I see it. You know, in practice, and you know, hopefully, you know, we are ready for game one. How will you handle the last preseason? I'm just going to read. You know, I think every team's different. It was interesting. You know, every year with a group of guys, you, you can see who wants to play. Like, literally, you can see it. And uh, so I'm just going to try to visually make the right decision. You know, honestly, we had guys in Boston, the older guys, whatever reason, wanted to play the last game. I didn't get that one for the life of me, but they did. Uh, and so we set them in other games. Um, you know, I never did. I can tell you that. You know, I just didn't even want to be in the run into anybody. You know, that's how that game is played a lot. So, uh, and then we're gonna have to judge on what they do. You know, that's one of those coaches' games where you look down and see who's on the floor. You want to make sure your guy is against their best guys. So, how about the scheduling though itself? That uh, you got one more game and then the whole week. How, how does that come? Through? That's perfect. That's exactly the way we set it up. You know. Um, we, I like a lot of time going into that first game. You, know, you can watch film of all the things you didn't do and fix them. Uh, you can actually have some prep work for, for the teams you're playing. You know, we play it back to back, so you can actually have prep work for both teams. You know, so and then we're off. You know, on to this season. I'm looking forward to that. You know, was a guy that um, you know last year in the past it looked like he finally had been. Yeah, injury. yeah, that was a big injury. You know, people missed that injury. Uh, with us last year against the Golden State. He was starting to really help us. Then he goes out and uh, we can't use him at all in that other series. Um, he looks good. You know, he, we, we made a deal this summer, uh, told him at the end of the year, he's back if he's in shape. That was my deal. And he came back in great shape, put some muscle on, you know, for you to, you know, you know but, or a muscle. It's all relative. You know, it's all relative. But he, he's, um, you know, he looks great. I'm really happy. And he's another guy, like, even when he doesn't play, he's a great guy to have on your bench. He says the right stuff. Like, he, he's not scared of the, the stars. He tells them the truth. And I think it's always better when a player tells another player the truth over, over a coach. Can he steal some of this at the three for you guys? Or is he a guy uh, it depends on the matchup. He's, yeah. he's kind of aged into a four. Uh, but there's nights, like tonight actually, they were so big uh, that you probably could have slipped him in at the four. And we've talked about it in practice. Uh, uh, we started two practices ago. We're making them run our skeleton at the three just in case, you know, we have to do it. I, I hope we don't. But just in case, if you do, at least he knows the position. How about, you? How about your stars tonight? Not too bad, huh? Yeah, they were pretty good. They were pretty good. Um, you know what I liked is Blake had, uh, you know, an advantage low tonight, and we took advantage of it. We, we, we kept doing it. I thought we went away from it a couple of times, you know. Um, and then CP was very aggressive, you know. Uh, they were going under screens, and 
you know, we just tell him to dig him on the shoot. <laughs> you know, uh, he's, he can really shoot the ball. He's a, he's, a, he's 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 always, he's a great shooter, but he's still a point guard, and point guards struggle uh, shooting because they're thinking they sh shouldn't shoot or they should pass. And we're trying to convince him if someone wants to go on there on you, just shoot the ball. It's our best play. It's the best play we're going to have on that possession. And tonight he did that. When you go back and look at this film, you see Jared Cunningham in there last three minutes or so of the game. What were some of the things you tried to look for with? He's been great. You know, he's a tough kid. You know. Um, defensively, he tries to do the right thing. He's not scared to shoot the ball. He's aggressive, and it's great having a jet. I mean, he's a he's a jet, so it's great having you know speed kills. I mean, speed is nice to have, and he has that. How much do you think that rest day helped your go-to guys there last night? Talk Probably a lot. I mean, I, I don't anticipate them playing this well if they had played last night. That's for sure. And you know, the way I looked at it. Um, I knew I was going to play them one of the two games, and why not play them in front of the home fans? Why, why treat Golden State fans? Treat our own fans. That's the way. I, honestly, it's silly, but that was the decision that I made, and it was the right one. Doc, what's the right number of preseason games? I think four. I really do. Uh, I said I think we talked about it earlier, but I, that, maybe I didn't know. But I, I'm a big believer in that. I think if you play four preseason games and start the season a week earlier with the same amount of games, um, now you can stretch the season. Uh, you don't have as many back-to-backs. You can take away some of the four and fives. Uh, I think that would go a long way uh, for us. How you can know? you squeeze in the they, – they send teams to different countries. Can you still squeeze that? Yeah, in? you can still do it. You know, um, you, you, Your first preseason game would be over there or your first two. You come back, you have a ton of time still. If you took it to four, you can still start the season a week earlier. You know, I think it'd be good. Anybody listening to that at all? I haven't really talked about it yet because out of nowhere, all of a sudden, we're talking about shortening, you know, not playing 82 games, which I don't think is very realistic. Uh, but maybe we can still play the 82, take away some preseason, and give our guys more rest. You know, the big issue, uh, from what I see, is the four and fives. And the back to backs, you know, and so I think the fans would appreciate it. It'd be better basketball, or, or more rest of the teams, you know. You know, we have some of these TV games where guys have played five games in eight nights and they're on the road, and the game looks terrible because they're tired, you know. So we can figure that one out. Uh, it's hard, though. It's uh, there's no arena availability. It's hard, you know. It's really hard to fit these games in. Is that a better solution than 44-minute games, four preseason games? I think so. Uh, but I don't think that was a – I'm not sure if I like that or not. I just don't know yet. I haven't – I didn't look at the game. I haven't talked to Brad or anybody about the game. So um, I, I can't wait to talk to them to, to figure out what they thought, you know. But I don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. That's the other Brad, not this Brad. They're all different. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was talking about you. <laughs> I didn't like it you, did you like it? When did they play? <laughs> oh, that <was> my <laughs> oh my gosh! You, you talked about playing at Palmer before the game. Did he ever? He's obviously sitting fairly close to you. I thought I heard him. I wasn't sure. Was that him screaming? Yes. yes. Was yes. it? Well, I was like, I at first I thought it was somebody. Uh, honest to gosh, because I never looked, but I, I honestly thought it was somebody doing an impersonation of Steve Bomber because I could hear his voice. <laughs> I miss it or something like that, and I turn around. And then one time I said, I think that was Steve over there. Yeah, I think that was our. Yeah, that was my best I could do. He's gonna pass up, buddy, if it's November. Who's that? He can't, Steve. He can't keep that up, can he? Was he? Oh, oh was he oh, active he today? Oh, he I didn't know that. Huh? He was throwing t-shirts. I love it. You know, <laughs> listen, he's got energy. Energy's good. I, you know, I said about players, I'd rather kindle a fire than start one. You know, he's got it. Damn, I wish I had some of that energy. <laughs> it wasn't to do with the atmosphere. We have Steve Ballmer on one side of the Staples Center, and then you have Cooper Durrell on the opposite side. Yeah. Uh, what is it? U G L Y, you ugly? <laughs> is that what he's saying? <laughs> I love that cheer. He used to do it when I was playing. I didn't like it then. All right, I'm done. You guys are too silly.